once you start designing and you start making all these um, compromises as far as how to make it to the endpoints, you start getting into these type of situations where your lines start breaking. The idea of the system and using these markings is that it will warn you or it will let you know ahead of time what needs to be done uh, and what will be required to reproduce this in metal. So in this case, for example, just by looking at this part, I can, I know ahead of time that I will need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches of material, and I will have to make a cut here and a well there to be able to produce this because my lines broke there. If I end up with a mock-up or, or a layout that looks like this, a lot of broken arrows, well, I will know that I will have to do one joint, two joints, three joints. If that's too many, then I can spend more time and be able to get rid of a few of them and minimize, again, my, my work. And that's what we want. We want to minimize and simplify the amount of work, the hard work. So all the precision and all the engineering is embedded in this, pro in this plastic parts. So we start our design by using the included, uh, what we call block adapters, which are essentially freezer plugs like uh, devices that allow any shape of block to be attached to um, an existing uh, metal tubing end. The wrench, uh, it's a three millimeter that's also included. And essentially what we do is just slide it into it. And then by pure um, torquing of the bolt, the, the space, the, the rubber discs will expand and they will grab to it. So now we have anchored to our flange and we can start our design from this point on. I can start adding material there. I can also rotate it if I want to, or even if this part is not what I want, I can substitute it with any other shape. So at this point, I can just go and start aiming at my uh, uh, destination, which is the collector. So another way of working at your design, instead of going, starting your design at the head and moving downstream like it would be a, the natural choice, we can also do it the other way around. We want to move into the head starting at the collector. The reason it could be, for example, you're using a slip uh, collector that requires the tubes to be perfectly parallel so that they can fit inside. So in that case, you simply choose our starting point at the collector and do exactly the same. We tighten it, we lock the, um, the block in place, and then start our design. And then, again, we can rotate it and spin it any, any location we want. We can do the same for all of them and be able to create our, our assembly, our design from that point and then getting into the head. So that in essence is how the system works. As we move along and create a, an assembly that we're happy with, we're going to start generating information that will be extremely useful to reproduce it in metal. In the instructions, included, of course there's a, a detailed explanation of each step, how everything works. Well, one of the key things that is included there is what we call our control sheets. This little document becomes really the whole key to your design, because in this you will be able to record all the information that is uh, necessary, not only to reproduce it in metal, but also to give it a cost and, uh, and the value uh, as far as reproducing it. To illustrate uh, quickly how this works, we're gonna create a very, a very fast uh, design. You know, let's just assume this is our primary runner. This is what we want to reproduce. It works, again, it's an assumption. It could be somewhere like this or, or it doesn't really matter. This is what we want to reproduce. So, all the information that we have in these blocks, we're going to put it on paper so we can put a price tag, tag to it so that we can uh, make a decision if that's a good thing, if we want to go forward with it or, or we need to tweak it a little bit more. So in this case, again, following the rule of, of our arrows, we're going, to, we're going to realize that we have two straights and one, two, and three. Make sure all this are in line. We have three blocks in a bend. Uh, we check their center line radius, which corresponds with two inch. So we have one, two, three bends and two straights. So we're going to move in and mark two straights and three bends, and this will constitute our first section. 
Then we have a break in the line, and then we have it reappears another, again in, in another section where we have another three uh, curve blocks. Again, the radius is still two inch radius. So we're gonna use the other three left in this U-bend. So in essence, to be able to produce this, I need only one U-bend, or it could be also J-bend, and I need to make one, two, three cuts and make one weld at this point. So again, all that is translated into time and money. I know how much this is gonna cost. I, know I can get an estimate of how much the cuts are gonna cost and how much my weld time is, is also uh, priced at. And then I can realize how much this is gonna cost. And again, I haven't even touched metal. This is the power of this uh, system, that it can get you very close to what you wanna go and give you all the information to make a decision if that's a good thing to do or not.